day and the third day. Um, we have Aileen Lee, a partner at uh, Kleiner Perkins, um, who is going to talk about Moneyball for the consumer web. And as a, an expression and illustration of that, she has brought a CEO along with her, Doug Mack, the CEO of One Kings Lane. Um, and they're going to be talking about using the science of data to make more efficient product and marketing decisions. So Aileen and Doug, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Hey guys. Okay. Thanks for having me here today. So hi, Doug. Hi, Aileen. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly this morning about an idea that I call Moneyball for the Consumer Web. And this is not about using statistics to figure out which companies to invest in. Uh, how many of you have seen the movie Moneyball or read the book? It's a fantastic book by Michael Lewis. Raise your hands high. Okay, so, it's a, so for those of you who haven't heard of it, uh, the protagonist of a real life story, this real life story Moneyball, is Billy Bean. He's the general manager of the Oakland A's baseball team. And so in our world, he'd be like the CEO of a venture-backed startup. And Billy's got a challenge. He wants to kind of build up his team and improve his team's track record, but the, talent, the, the battle for talent is fierce. The best people are very expensive, and he's got a budget smaller than almost everyone else's. So what is he going to do? So his big idea is to get radical with data. And so he's going to basically use, uh, he's going to ask different questions, use data differently, recruit some people to his team that he works very closely with, and they build a data-obsessed culture. And it works. They basically, for a while it works, uh, they basically reach the playoffs five times in, in just a decade on a budget that's pretty much smaller than every other competitor's. So I started thinking about how is this relevant to the consumer web? Oh, sorry, I haven't even advanced any of my slides. Sorry about that. Can we see it on the main slide and go back to the beginning? Is it on the side? Oh, sorry about that. Can we go back? Okay, so it's Billy. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. So that's his track record. Okay, so I started thinking about this, uh, how this affects the consumer web, when I started hanging out with the founders of Rent the Runway, which is a startup in New York that enables women to rent the designer dresses of their dreams for any occasion. And what I realized was that for a pretty early stage company, Rent the Runway had 25 people, and one of their first VP hires, most senior, one of their first senior hires was a guy named VJ Subramanian. Uh, that's his baseball card, uh, who was the VP of data analytics. You know, for a 25-person company to hire a data scientist from Oracle and have that person reporting to the CEO and be on the e-staff is a little bit non-traditional. But, uh, and VJ's team is now 10% of the company, actually. They work across from the people who buy the dresses to the people who fulfill the dresses and customer service and everyone in between, basically asking questions differently, looking at the data, helping their, his colleagues, think about and how to use data, really building a data-driven culture. And as I looked into this more, I realized that this is happening at the smartest, most innovative consumer web companies today. So LinkedIn, in 2008, Reid Hoffman actually recruited a guy named DJ Patel. DJ, also somewhat of a non-traditional hire, he was previously an assistant professor at University of Maryland, I think specializing in non-linear chaos theory of physical events. Uh, DJ basically uh, built a team over time of over 200 people at LinkedIn. And it was not just data scientists, but it was also product people and engineers. And they worked with all of their business partners across the organization, but their, their insights also led to killer product innovations like people you may know on LinkedIn. How many of you guys have used that? Probably, I, I certainly have. Zynga, when they were just 400 people, which I know sounds kind of big, but I think now they're almost over 3,000 people, hired a guy named Ken Rudin. Again, a little bit of a non-traditional background. He's not from the gaming industry. He's from Siebel and Salesforce. And Ken is the VP of Data Analytics and Platform Technologies. Oops. So let's get back to the Rent the Runway example. So Rent the Runway, when they got started, I'm going to talk a little bit about how they use data and how it's cha changed the outcomes for the company. When they got started, they bought dresses. And their dress buying decisions were informed by stylistas who really understood what was going on in trends and people who had decades of buying experiences, buying dresses for the highest end retailers. So they had a good sense of what sells best in stores. 
So here's an example of some of the dresses that Rent the Run Runway first bought. And they all rented well. You know, it's a good idea, and so all the dresses were renting well. But they looked at the data, VJ's team did, and they realized that some dresses were renting much better than others. There were kind of winners, and then not so much. So can you guess, can anyone guess from the dresses that are on the screens, which were the best sellers? Black? Purple? Okay, so anyone, if you guessed the four left-hand dresses, those were best renters, highest demand dresses. And the ones on the right, not so much. Really hard to tell, right? So what did they do? They went and looked at the data. And they asked questions differently, and they started tagging dresses and consumer behavior based on different criteria that are not usually tracked in retail. And what they found was color matters and designer matters and dress length matters, but also the time of year matters, what the occasion is that the woman's renting the dress for, the age of the renter, her body type, her neckline, even the model that's wearing the dress on the site makes a difference in conversion and rental rates. So actually there are 19 variables that they have actually built into a model that, that is predictive now at Rent the Runway on what we should buy in the future. Because as you can see, it's really hard to tell by just looking at a dress what's going to be most popular and what's going to be most in demand. And just to give you an example of how this has played out, these are actually now some of our best sellers at Rent the Runaway. So the, as you can tell, the model has evolved. Someone said color makes a difference, but it's really hard to tell. You have to rely on the data, and you have to build a data-oriented culture. So for my next example, I'm going to invite my friend Doug Mack, who's the CEO of One Kings Lane, to uh, talk for a minute. He is also building a killer data-oriented culture. Um, and he also has a unique way of looking at data that he's been generous enough to share with us today. Great, thanks. So for those that don't know us, we lead the home category of the flash sales market. And the flash sales industry is all about urgency. Every single day, we launch new sales that last 72 hours. Prices are 50% off retail. And our, our membership swarms the site, scoops up the sales. Then the next day, we start a new, uh, a new day again. And we do that every day. So we create that Black Friday effect 365 days a year, which is pretty powerful. Um, so we've believed two things about data. One is big data is not enough. It has to be real-time data that we can act on during the course of the day. And number two is the everyday business user, non-technical user, has to be able to self-serve access and act upon that data. So I'm going to show you a quick video of a day in the life of One King's Lane when we launch. This is it through the eyes of the consumer. She's shopping our page. She's finding a furniture event. She's looking for that perfect item for her home in this very simple, elegant shopping experience. But behind the scenes, all of our merchants are logged into this real-time dashboard where they see all the activity happening real-time on One Kings Lane site. They can see the sales adding up. They can see which sales are performing, which aren't. They can see average order sizes, number of products per item. But most importantly, each category merchant can see how their event is doing and start a drill down process. In this case, the home office merchant can look in and see how many items are sold out. Do I have enough inventory left? What's the conversion ratio? And then continue to drill down to figure out how to optimize this event for the day. So this is her look into the event to say, through the eyes of the consumer, you see this page, and now the merchant can see this page with all sorts of data appended. And what she'll quickly find in this example are an item that's a gem in the rough, where we can uh, find something buried way down on the page that has a ton of inventory there with the star, the rug, a ton of page views, and actually should be elevated in the hierarchy so that consumers, as they're flooding through the site, are seeing the items most likely to sell. In addition, there's additional layers of drill down for our merchants where they can see what sells with other things so that if somebody adds that rug to the cart, what else might they add to the cart, a piece of art or whatnot, so that as she re-merchandises the site throughout the day, she can always have items together that really excite our customers. So this has been a huge boon for the growth of our business. We've grown to over 100 million in revenue in just two years on the web. And um, using these tools across the business from a very young age has allowed even groups like our marketing group year to date to reduce our customer acquisition costs by 30% just by looking at the data real time and tweaking it and tweaking it all day long. So we're definitely playing Moneyball. That's pretty good stuff, huh? I think that's, I mean, this is the first time that anyone outside of One Kings Lane has ever had a chance to see that system. So thank you, Doug. Sure. So parting thoughts. Are you building a data culture in your company like Billy Bean? And if you had to moneyball your business, what would you be doing differently? Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks for showing that. Yeah, really cool. Thank you for thank, thank you. you for showing that. That was that was that was cool.
I'm glad my wife actually just left. Um, 